All right, friends, what is up and how are you doing? How are you embracing this winter? Are you training inside, training outside, swifting? But I bet you, no matter where you are, you're really looking forward to the spring. So here's a recap of what's been going on. Now, this week is so amazing. I'm finally hitting my 200th episode. I cannot even believe it. And I want to thank you guys being for being such amazing, loyal listeners and just engaging and loving the episodes. Um, I look forward to bringing so many really cool people for the rest of the year. Now, this Friday, we are be- I'm going to be doing a giveaway, like I mentioned, from I'm going to be choosing winners from all the reviews placed this year. So if you haven't made your review, please stop and go to Apple Podcast and put your review in there. If you already have, thank you so much. I really love reading your feedback. So on Friday, put this in your calendar. I'm going live four times, 8.30, 12, 3 and 6 p.m. Eastern, and I'm going to be going in and picking winners from those reviews. And uh, so we have some Amazon gift cards and some other prizes, and I just super, super excited to give away and thank you guys for being such amazing humans and listeners and sharing the podcast. And um, you know what? I just love doing this for you. So take care and rock your day and enjoy the episode coming up. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Secrets from the Saddle, all things cycling podcast with your host, Sylvie Daou. And we have Mohammed Sasi, who, aka Hammer, who is sitting in. Are you in Lausanne as well? No, I'm in Dakar in Senegal. Okay, Dakar in Senegal. So, yeah. um, he, as we are talking um, outside of the podcast, launched a business when. Uh, like the whole com- uh, the whole country shut down like a lot of entrepreneurs i have to um uh, just uh make note because there are those people who got busy and those people who got not busy and muhammad was one of those who took the opportunity to launch a business but before we get into that um his nine to five is humanitarian work and he manages a charity. And most recently, as I mentioned, launched a business selling cycling accessories. So that's the reason why he's here. Um, mainly caps and mus- musettes. Musettes, yeah. Musettes. So I have to talk about those. Um, the business is called uh, Africap Apparel. And I saw him on one of the late like I saw him I saw his caps on one of the girls Vera who I interviewed and uh, I was like where did you get that cap and she's like it's from this company and I was like oh my god I have to bring them on and also before we bring out Mahabin he is a sponsor to the tour of Lusan which we interviewed uh, Stylish, who is the lead organizer of that event, which is episode 177. So if you want to go back and uh, learn about a cycling event that he sponsors in Africa, that's the episode you want to go to. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Sylvie. I'm so excited to have you here because I am a big fan of cycling caps. I don't think people wear them as much here as they do maybe in Europe, but I have okay. quite a, I, I have quite a collection myself okay. and I, I do love wearing them underneath my caps and I have a variety of different um, thicknesses. Okay. So before we get into your apparel, how did you get into cycling and what led you to decide to make caps? Okay. Well, the two are kind of not really related. I definitely got into cycling oh. caps way before I got into cycling. Like you, I, no. I really like cycling <laughs> caps, but I've always just liked them from a stylistic perspective oh. or point of view. So I've, I've always been wearing 
cycling caps is not as far back as I can remember, but for a while. Um, I think from the podcast you did with Kareem on the Tour de Lance, he mentioned football being the main sports in Sierra Leone, and, and that's the case for me. I've, traditionally, I've, football is my first love. Oh, I'm not okay. sure if I can say that on this podcast. <laughs> you but can, I've said it. because you, you yeah. ride bikes too. So it's Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got into cycling when I was recovering from uh, f- an operation on my knee, and um, from yeah, football. I mean, like, exactly. Yeah. I I hear this story a lot. <laughs> I think yeah. I think I met Vera, and I think her story is similar as well. Um, yeah. Anyway, but uh, what happened was, um, yeah, I was cycling then, and then. I think with the charity I'm a bit associated with, we decided to do it, one of these charity rides from London to Paris. And that gave us, that was when I actually had to start training properly. And with <laughs> a friend and a colleague, we would then go for rides in the morning. And that's where my love of cycling actually grew. So this was um, a couple of years before Africa. And then with my nine to five, the humanitarian work, I was based abroad in Nigeria. And I mean, there's many things to say about Nigerians, but one of the things I reluctantly always praise them for is their sense of style and presentation. Mm-hmm. They're very well-dressed people. And in Nigeria, I learned that nearly everyone has their own personal trainer. So, you know, really? in the UK, yes, yeah, not personal okay, trainer. Okay, sorry, you're talking personal about- Taylor, the, Taylor. The, oh, you're, you're talking about the UK. No, Nigerians. Nigerians. Okay, so Nigerian. Yeah. And I just noticed that you're in Wales. <laughs> no, Dakar, Senegal. But I grew up in Wales. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. Let's go to your background. <laughs> okay. <laughs> from Africa or the UK? So I'm originally from Sierra Leone. That's where my parents are from. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's but how, as you can okay, tell from my roots. accent, I, I sound very <laughs> British. I grew up in the UK and I spent a lot of years working there. Then with the job, I work for an international charity. I move around a lot. Okay, but my registered address is in the UK. Okay, I got it now. So I'm like, okay, just a yeah. second here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it gets confusing. Yeah. So, okay, so let's go back to you're getting on the bike uh, after yeah. your knee injury <laughs> and then okay. falling in love <laughs> with cycling. So yeah, we um, trained to do this ride from London to Paris in three days. And honestly, it was extremely difficult. At the time, it was the most physically demanding um, activity I ever did. And we were all a bit amateurs with Google Maps and we picked a hostel to stay in, which is really far away from the route and it rained for two of the days. But I think all the difficulties made it more satisfying and rewarding when we actually reached the destination. And at that time, I never cycled more than I think 30 kilometers or 30, yeah, 30 kilometers. And we were doing days of 50 kilometers plus. So I was really, I was scared. <laughs> I was oh, definitely yeah. scared like I wouldn't be able to do it. But then like once I did, I, I'm, I mean, it's one of the biggest highs I've ever had, like the sense mm-hmm. of achievement. And then, you know, you want more. And so then yeah. I got into cycling from there. Mm-hmm. As I'm sure mm-hmm. you can relate to that feeling. Yeah, there's that high. And then you're just like, where can I find more of it? And so, yeah. so then where did that lead you after that, that event? So um, so then we started to, we did more events. We cycled from London to Amsterdam, London to mm-hmm. Brussels, but we also then did more rides domestically in the UK. One mm-hmm. of my favorite rides in the UK, which um, is an unofficial event, is called the Dulwich Dynamo. And basically you start off from London and it's a night ride. You leave around oh. seven or eight o'clock and you cycle to the east coast of England, you arrive at the beach in the morning. <gasps> For the sunrise? It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely Oh my God, amazing. that is, what's yeah. it called? The Dunwich Dynamo. 
Dunridge. Dun, I think it's D U N. Yeah. Let me just check that because it's either Dulwich or Dunwich. I always get it wrong. I like that idea. So you just show up on the shoreline. For yeah, exactly. Sun, no. Sunrise. Y yes, yes, yeah. Wow. Okay. Who would want so, to so do that? So it's Dunridge, D U N W I C H. Oh, W. And it's an it's an unofficial event, so anyone can oh, okay. turn up on the day and decide <laughs> to do it. And I mean, you see everyone. You see people on tandems. You see proper cycling club cyclists. You see parents with their children. <gasps> How long but is the that? Highlight, Sorry, I had it's to ask. It's like the night ride. Like you, uh, uh, the distance I think is about one hundred and twenty kilometers. Okay, because like that's you know you're looking at eight hours. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you it's, it's, it's essentially it through the night. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So that's, uh, so you did that one and then? And then just different rides then with friends um, here and there. Um, I can't think of any in the last couple of years, but a couple during lockdown and nothing mm -hmm. really exciting since more steady stuff. And then Mm -hmm. more sort of regular going to the the tracks and just been in a couple of laps and that type of thing right so then where did the caps come in like obviously this must have been something happening pre-pandemic and then once the pandemic I was just like okay let's mm. just do this so yeah have... I was I was living in Nigeria at the time and as I was saying Nigerians are really well dressed and one of the reasons for this apparently is that most people have their own individual tailor so as I said to you earlier I used to wear well I, I wear cycling caps and I decided to have ask a tailor to make a cap for me out of Ankara which is a it's the tribal print material you probably see on our caps or you see associated with Africans um, mm -hmm. Although they're different types of materials, and car is just one. Anyway, I had a cap made out of that, and I went to one of our rides. I think it was the London to Belgium ride, wearing one of these caps. And everyone asked me, "Hey, where'd you get your cap?" And I was like, oh, "I had it made." And then they're like, "Oh, if you make one, I'll buy it." So then I had the idea, and oh, I mean, I was hesitant about going fully operational with a business, but it was locked down, and and I was like, "Okay, why not?" So that's so, when the caps were launched. Right. So then you have your, so I guess it's out of Nigeria, everything like so the, the creation of the material. The, the, so actually, I mean, some of the materials I found in Nigeria, this is one of the fun parts. Of yeah. The talk business. about the material. Um, I mean, fortunately with the job I've had, have and had, I've had the opportunity to travel around different areas in West Africa and different countries in general. And, you know, some people, when they travel, they like to collect things. And I'm always on the lookout for materials. Mm. Um, I'm, I've never necessarily had a purpose for them, but you never know what they might come in handy <laughs> for in the future. So, yeah, I had some materials from Nigeria, some from Ivory Coast at the time, some from Ghana. And then I decided to, oh, wow. to produce the caps out of them because um, some of them, some of them are just prints, you know, they don't mean anything. Right. You see, but some of them tell um, uh, traditional stories or mm -hmm. have specific meanings. So in one way or another, I, I believe anyway, every material tells its own story as it comes from a region. Right. So, so I was looking on your face, uh, you know, uh, sorry, your, uh, your website. And you have yeah. uh, four different uh, styles, not styles, but four different uh, prints out right now. Now, yeah. do each one of those prints, like you said, do you do that now? You collect um, and get material from each country that's sig that um, has a significant um, message that from that country, or uh, is um, like you know that I think it's a good question yeah. I would love to say I would love to say yes but at the <laughs> moment it's it's a bit random it's it's I don't want to say it's whatever I can get but obviously mm -hmm. corona has 
restricted yeah. and affected travel. So it's whatever I see and whatever I can get. I think if you right. were to ask me which country would I go to now to buy material specifically, mm -hmm. it would be Mali because they um, uh, historically produced specific types of material and Ghana as well. I was in Ghana and I was really impressed with the types of material they have and they have um, their own sort of renowned printed material called kente and you can get this well, kente is originally woven which wouldn't be mm -hmm. very practical for cycle caps but you can get it printed and um, yeah I would like to do more more um, uh, production runs with featuring this now, you mentioned that there's something uh, really uh, special about this material, and it has no plastic in it. Do you want to talk caps, about the, yeah. ma the material itself, like just the significance that it's from Africa and, and how it's created? So, yeah, I mean, I have to That's say... That's your signature that not, thing, right? Yeah, not, not a lot of Ankara, though, is actually from... Africa, a lot What's... of it is produced. Oh, go yeah, ahead. In um, the Netherlands, surprisingly, oh. <laughs> and um, the West Indies. Initially, I mean, the, the history of Ankara is that um, when the Dutch were, co when they had the imperial regime and they'd colonized certain countries, they were producing this type. They tried to cheaply produce this printed material in. Um, uh, South South Asia, I believe. I think, yeah, South Asia. Um, and for some reason, it got caught on in West Africa and other parts of Africa. So now the Dutch sort of export wax to African countries, although there are African countries and there are types of material which is produced in Africa, but a lot of Ankara does come from the Netherlands. Um, I don't know why it's popular, but bold prints, colors, the vibrancy for all of these reasons and the symbolic um, meanings that you can get with them means that there's a market for this in, in African countries. Can you explain um, Ankara? Like Ankara. The material? Ankara. It, it's cotton, essentially. But um, okay. if, if you're familiar with batik, mm -hmm. which is a form of dyeing and um, uh, creating uh, patterns in cloth. It's essentially when you produce co the cotton or you produce it, that you stencil in patterns so that when then you add the color, they were printed in a certain way. So okay. you, you basically, like if you look at one of our cups, I think it's called Anka. I think Anka is the one with a bird. It's one of our popular uh, yeah. models you'll see a bird reprinted again and again and again. Oh, and yes. Then, yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, there would have originally been the stencil of the bird and, and, and this material has got different meanings in different countries in West Africa. Right. And that was... Going back um, to your... That's um, this one. I'm just going to show everybody. That one. Yes. Ankara. Anchor. Yeah, so I'm just looking on his on his Instagram page, and I saw that. And of course, as a woman, I'm like, I like the one Vera's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> That's our most popular, our most popular model to date, um, with both men and women. Actually, it's also my favorite prints as well. Yeah, um, but I, it's not available. Are you sure? Is it? Oh, anyway, I think. I think so maybe I, I missed yeah, it on your address. website because I was looking through it because I'm like, oh, let's see what oh. else they got. Um, but yeah, there. So you mentioned wax. Is there any wax yeah. in in the so material? Some of some some of the. I mean, this is what it, it's cotton, but it's finished with a sort of waxing process, which gives oh. it the sheen. When you oh, um, okay. if, if you see them up close, it's like. And if you ever end up going to a West African wedding and you see the materials, it, it, it's cotton, but as I said, it, it can be waxed. So just like how you have wood, which is varnished and it has a mm -hmm. sheen to it, it's oh, the same process okay. they apply to the cotton. So, so that's why that... it's often informally referred to as wax. 
Uh, okay. But that doesn't take, um, that doesn't hinder like breathability or no, anything. No, 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 no. Completely fine to wear. And okay. for the peaks of the caps, we've eliminated, I mean, most cycle caps, the peak inside is made out of plastic and we've mm -hmm. eliminated that from our production oh, yes. process. So we either use interfacing, which is the fibers, which you might find in a blazer, there's no shoulder mm -hmm. padding, or we mm -hmm. try and use rubber instead. Oh, that's a great idea. Cause I had yeah. plastic in one of my caps and it cracked yeah. right in the middle. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, that's happened to me as well. And I'm like, dang, and I love that hat. So it doesn't look yeah. <laughs> so, but that's awesome. And so now you're in full production is, do you find that, um, uh, being a sponsor of, uh, the tour is giving you a lot of exposure and more business? Is this, um, do you have like a plan for this year to have more um, people wearing your obviously hats? Obviously, or... we're, we're in discussions for this. And... <laughs> Uh, we are one of a number of sponsors, which is great for mm -hmm. the tour and the tour success. We view the tour success as our success. So, and at the moment, I mean, the reason for supporting the tour is to help that to be as successful as it can be, as opposed for our own exposure. We sort of understand that as the more successful the tour is, the more exposure it will lead to us helpfully. And mm -hmm. as we said also as well, you know, um, our caps are produced in Sierra Leone and one of our okay. aims as well is, right. is really to shine a spotlight onto grassroots mm -hmm. cycling initiative in Sierra Leone and sponsor these types of events when and when and if they come. Right. So, okay. So they are, they are, um, the production is done in Sierra Leone. Yes. Cool. I did, I was going to ask that. Um, yeah. Now, are you going to have, um, you know, like how sponsors in, well, I'm going to say North American races, like they have a booth of some sort. Exactly. Are you going to, are, are they going to have that kind of setup? Do they? We're going to, we're looking to do something like this this year. Um, last mm -hmm. year's tour is a really big success. Unfortunately, we weren't able to travel. But right. uh, well, we're yeah. looking to have a stronger presence there this year right. and that type of thing. It's not finalized, so I don't want to confirm anything. Um, right. Yeah, we are. We, we've got some exciting ideas for this year. Oh, and that's awesome. So there's, uh, there, can you share any? No, I can't <laughs> say anything at the moment. Dang. All I'm right. Sorry, well, yeah. um, I love the fact that, um, so Okay, what is the um, the the Mousset? Was that okay? So the Mousset's uh, feed bags, which some oh. people know about, but yeah, I, feed bags. Not, no, a lot like of people know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. we've gone with yeah. the traditional name Mousset. Um, this is a bit more sophisticated, I think. Anyway, <laughs> well, it is. Rather than I just a feed like bag. not yeah. to know because that's my yeah, which we like because you know. The the principle of AfriCap is designed for cycling, worn for style. So all of our products fundamentally are cycling accessories, the cycling cap, the feed bag. These are, the function is to serve cycling, but we also encourage people to wear them when they're not cycling or to use them casually. And, and this is also the, the, the idea with the feed bag. Yes, I mean, you could buy a tote bag or you could get a bag like this, I suppose, but this is made to the dimensions of a feed bag. Um, and yeah, right. you could wear it whenever, if you're just stepping out or you're going out with friends or whatever. Okay, I'm just trying to find a picture on your, well, I'm just trying to find your website here. But so, yeah, because I've seen people use them when they're going to like an event and they typically yeah. have like, you know, maybe uh, a change of clothing or food or whatnot. And then they put it exactly, on the side yeah. and then they take it. But cool. And it's also, is it made out of the same material or is this company? Same material, yeah. And designs. Yeah. 
Perfect. Wow. All right, everyone. So you got some homework and that's to go to AfriCap on Instagram and they've got some great photos um, where you can see their products in, uh, in full color and also links there to do some shopping. So where else can we find you or is there anything else that you would love to add? Um, yeah. So yes. obviously you can uh, purchase the projects directly at africapapparel.com. But mm -hmm. we are looking as well to start having these caps stocked in independent uh, cycling shops. I mean, oh. we, yes, we're proud to say that these we've been selling internationally in Canada, in America, in different okay. countries in Europe, as far as Japan. Obviously, to, for individuals, then this can be relatively expensive with shipping costs. And one of our goals for 2022 is to expand then for our customers who are based internationally to be able to shop, let's say it's slightly more affordable prices or at least cheaper shipping or more locally. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if anyone in, uh, owns a shop and they're based in Canada or the States and you're listening to this, please do reach out and we look to partner up. Oh, that's great. Actually, I know a bunch of cycling shops okay. in the region here. I'm affiliated and, um, with a couple of them. If anyone's doing events, and you know, and they want to get personalized caps for an event, this oh. is something we're also thinking of offering this year as well. There might be obviously a time frame, so you'd have to be very right, very well organized yeah um, <laughs> and order well ahead of time um yeah, but, how would um, you yeah. how would you personalize those caps like on the flap or well i can say actually on this moment we'd be open to a lot of possibilities so you know the obvious one would be on the peak to mm -hmm. have something personal written on the message um we could look to print a specific tab on the side with right you know whether it's commemorating a date or or an event but um mm -hmm. i think there are different options and we're also looking to provide options for design as well i mean some of the newer styles we have you know some for some people we recognize that an all over print might be too loud for some people so we're mixing <gasps> now with block colors oh no um, don't you're gonna you're gonna change your whole outlook no no oh no gosh. We'll, we'll definitely have the all over prints we'll never oh my gosh that. they're but we so are looking to gorgeous because you know there's like the cycling cap and then there's yeah. these caps which are like like you said no they're stylish they're not like yeah you know oh my god they're you have to look at anyways we'll put their link and um yeah they're gorgeous they're gorgeous caps i'm gonna order one um but that's awesome so if anyone's out there if one of our listeners you're a style um a bike cap a uh, collector and you love these you, you have to look at their website and and support and like you're saying hammer that or mohammed that you know you have um the opportunity of collaborating with canadian american or american bike shops um a lot of our listeners come from the states and the uk right <laughs> <laughs> this is our, our third uh biggest audience um okay that's yeah. great yeah yeah it is up. so yes uh contact him and with that thank you so much for uh tuning in and thank you again for making this possible i really appreciate all the coordinating that uh, we had to do to get this done um and all of uh, make sure you follow Africap on Instagram and Seekers from the Saddle podcast um, and myself and Mohammed and um, yeah have an amazing day everybody thank you so much thank you Sylvie take care everyone